Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got the Russian 1K, 1K17, or 1K17, I guess, uh, Zati, or Zati, Zati, I don't know how to say that in Russian. Uh, laser tank is what I'm going to call it, because <laughs> apparently that's what it is. It's a laser tank, um, meant to obviously disrupt um, uh, guidance systems and things like that. I believe it was used to some kind of like, you know, shoot it at a plane, I want to say. Um, what's really interesting about this, I'm just noticing, is that there are obviously treads up here. Is this like a detachable thing? Like this came off and... I don't know. Uh, this is what happens when you don't research something in advance. Let's read the side of the box, and maybe that'll give us some 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 insight. The Russian uh, 1K17 Jati the, uh, is a self-propelled laser vehicle of Russian origin. The platform uses the MSTAS chassis with a battery of laser projectors mounted in the turret. It was developed by the Soviet Union in order to disable the optical electron equipment of enemy missiles, ground, and aerial vehicles. Tank used tank okay in quotes used an intense laser beam to disable the optical electronic equipment of the enemy vehicles. This was created by focusing light through a 30 kilogram through 30 kilogram of artificial rubies, which made the whole system very expensive to produce. The energy to power the laser was provided by a generator and an auxiliary battery system. The lenses themselves were capable of were able to operate in different environments by moving metal. Caps closer to to the to protect the lens. It was also equipped with a 12.7 millimeter NSV machine gun to defend it against attacks by infantry and air. Wow, it sounds like something that probably just never would have worked. <laughs> um, okay, well, let's go ahead and open the box and though and see what's on the inside. Now this is Trumpeter Kit um, 05542. Uh, just came out recently. We just uh, was sent to us by Stevens International. Thanks for. Thanks, guys, over there. Um, it's got gray styrene plastic, which is a big surprise being a trumpeter kit, isn't it? Um, and a lot of it. Let's take a look at the, um, the the hull chassis bits. This is the top portion. And I'm going to have to get my scissors, aren't I? I am. Uh, this is the top section. And not a lot of detail on here. There's some hatches on the side. There, uh, this obviously has stuff that goes over it. The back section has some some detail. Being that this was probably a secret vehicle, I'm not sure. Like if this is in a museum somewhere now, where people can get. Uh, oh goodness, camera, come, come on. There we go. Uh, it, whether they can get uh, there's a very small hatch detail here and some some of the the actual uh, crew hatches. Uh, whether they can get in to take photographs of something like this. So I'm not sure, like, as the accuracy, that seems like that may be an issue. Um, maybe that maybe it's somewhere where they can photograph it. And I'm sure someone out there will probably know that. Uh, the top section of the, the main hull chassis. Um, obviously a clip-out section here. So it does rotate, I guess, on a turret. I wonder what the... The treads that are obviously showing underneath the... Is that what actually drives it around? Like it doesn't have a um, an internal geared engine? Maybe it was so heavy it had to use that system. Anyway, I'm just hypothesizing here. Some some twist, twisted copper for obviously a tow rope. Um, here's the lower section of the hull, which has a lot of the nicer trumpeter detail we're starting to see now. That the units are just making these things like... A blank slate like they used to. They're they're starting to really look at the bottoms of these vehicles. We'll go ahead and take a look at just the fit of that top piece and see how it goes in. Fit looks good. Looks no issues detected. Everything looks like it's lining up. And uh, very nice. All right. Uh, some of the Rockets and other gears looks so awfully small for this. Maybe this, um, maybe the instructions will glean some of the things that I'm curious about with the uh, the whole secondary tracks up on the top thing. But um, yeah, the D 
detail here looks decent. Um, especially like on oh, nice way to slide off my hand there. Um, especially on like that piece there, that looks nice. No idea if it's accurate. Uh, but, uh, so we've got some clear pieces in here, I'm sure with a lot of laser lenses and things like that. I'll open that up and get some photo etch. We'll go ahead and continue on with the, the plastic sprue tour. Again, a lot of uh, access hatch uh, detail. There's a, looks like that might be actually a crew compartment hatch. Odd shape, but there was one on the top that was rather small. I mean, begs a question. I mean, this is supposed to be 1 35th scale, right? I mean, that is pretty small. I can barely get my finger, my middle finger through there. And I can get my index finger through there more. I suppose that would be big enough for a person to crawl through, but this doesn't look big enough for a person to crawl through. So is this just maybe a loading hatch? Maybe that's what this is, some kind of loading hatch. Uh, but definitely a lot of small hatch hatches and other... That's a bigger hatch there, obviously. Um, here's the top. Okay, so this is the bot. Actually, this is the bottom of the the main turret, laser turret, I guess. More uh, subtle detail shots there. There's the actual uh, area where the, the laser projectors are. Obviously, it sent out many many beams. Um, interesting that there is some main gun, main gun part supported in this piece. So this is obviously for. I assume another kit. Um, not sure, maybe in the original, what the chassis was for, and then this has some chassis parts on it or something. Not sure why they would have need to include this kit, this uh, sprue. Shoot, sorry. That's an obviously main gun, main battle gun, main battle tank gun. Um, and that's um, some kind of turret there, or mantlet. Turret, mantlet. Sorry, it's early. I'm, I'm, I'm still, my brain is still not quite woken up yet. Uh, yeah, um, more catches, more detail pieces here. Um, a, another piece that looks like the bottom. What the heck? I don't understand. All right, well, we're going to have to look at the instructions to figure out some of these plastic um, mysteries. And more, um, not hatches, but various... Uh, Armor detail bits to form up the different areas of the vehicle. Not seeing any production issues here. Nothing's really standing out. There's some some kind of sink-ish looking marks here, but I'm not really detecting them by feeling for them. But I don't know if you can see that. You can kind of see the uh, on this back edge here. You can kind of see what uh, looks like it might be a a sink mark. Um, and then some fenders, and obviously you've got to have some, it's a Russian tank, so you've got to have some wood logs for, you know, emergency ditch um, traversing and things like that. See the, the infamous Russian log. Uh, and uh, again, more kind of just panels and side, the side armor detail looks pretty nice. I'm not sure if this, again, was used on another kit. Uh, no dates stamped in on these. Oh, it, no, yeah. There was a flat area there. It looked like it was for a date. Same part, I believe. No, actually, different part. Sorry, this is the top fenders. Just looked like it was going to be the same thing. Um, looks like there's some nice uh, work there on that fender. If I can get the shot with just all the nice angling and such. And then we have individual track links, which look like they may snap piece to piece. So no, wait a minute, no, there's some other, ah, uh, there's a, a guide, uh, horny kind of center section that needs to be complete. <laughs> oh, goodness, with these tracks, I don't know why. Um, maybe this is a difference between, like, Asian culture and, and more European American culture, because... To a, a lot of Asian cultures, this is kind of like... A exercise of patience. My mother, my mother used to tell me when I used to build models when I was young, oh, Jim, you must have amazing patience. I would never be able to do that kind of thing. And this is, of course, with like a monogram kit from 1976 or something. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, I, 
these center horns, I just, I don't understand why they, they couldn't have been molded in. I'm not a plastic engineer, but I just, I don't get why they needed to be put on as separate parts. I mean, I'm sure there's a very good reason, don't get me wrong. Um, it's just that, you know, having to glue on another piece uh, after, you know, you've already snapped all these together is, or before, whichever the way it works. And is that, I think it's two maybe. I'm not actually going to have to look up the instructions on that too to see how that uh, plays out. But all right, continuing on, there's a lot of plastic in this box. This is not a cheap kit, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, whenever there's a lot of plastic, the price definitely seems to be, you know, big surprise. The price has affected by the amount of plastic styrene that goes in a box. So um, lots of small detail bits here. Um, not sure like what that is, but uh, very long, thin, small rod of some sort. And some extra tracks probably for spares for on the vehicle. Some small grab handles um, that, of course, don't want to focus. But you can kind of get the outline right. Uh, same piece, same sprue. Uh, this looks like duplicate screws here for the actual road wheels and suspension parts. And of course there'll be photos at the uh, towards the end of this review, as everybody who watches my reviews regularly knows. But if you're new, uh, you can skip ahead if you don't want to see the unboxing portion, just want to see like more detailed photos. That will be there as well. So, um, yeah, so there's going to be individual suspension kind of shock coils and, and arms, suspension arms off the vehicle itself. A duplicate set there. And then the last sprue is this one right here with some protected foam parts on it. Last piece does have a lot of small detail parts on it. Very nice, uh, like some parts like those down there kind of stick out. No idea what they're for, but some of the hatch work or the upper hatches. So like some nice detail. The aforementioned uh, machine gun. Oh, the shovel looks like it has some nice, uh, I don't know if I can get it to focus. There we go. Play around with the light there. Uh, so yeah, a lot of nice little small detailed pieces on this one. Let's go ahead and take a look at that clear and the decals and the photo etch, and then we'll move to the instructions and see if I can't answer some of those mysterious questions. What the heck's going on? What's going on? Old song. Okay. Clear. I was able to just kind of... So yeah, there's um, some of the lenses that obviously go on in one piece here for the, the... I'm not sure whether they get a red paint behind them to give them the red effect. I'm not sure how that's going to work, but yeah, these are all clear right now. I'm surprised they didn't include some red plastic parts. Interesting. Because they obviously on the box show that they're red, so... Alrighty then, uh, and a photo etch. Mark 2014 Trumpeter 555542, right? This one? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, yeah, nice, uh, quite a few detail bits there. Not sure those are, I guess those are kind of uh, tie downs or something. They're very small. Yeah, very, 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 very small. And the decals. I'm not sure if this is even still in. Uh, might be why, again, it may be in a museum somewhere, because I don't, I don't believe they're still out in deployed Russian hands. Hey, look, at there's those taped those taped things that I thought I didn't think. Okay, then you go kind of got the overkill scenario. Like, okay, so you, ta you taped on a thing and you put it in a clear plastic. Not, ne you know, not necessary to both, I don't think. Um, there you go, and lots of numbers. All right, let's solve some mysteries. What do we got here? Master tools. Looks like the uh, hobby tools, master tools. And this is, I think, an advertisement. Yeah, an advertisement. Might be a company that Trump or owns or, or so forth. A section for uh, new models coming out. We just got that de Havilland Sea Hornet as well as the Fencer. Um, 1 16th scale German Panzer Kampfwagen 4. I think we might have asked for that, but I'm not sure we'll get it. So 
And then there's a painting and marking guide in color here with some very nice camo, three color camo options. All right, so let's take a look at some of those issues or what the, the way it's made. Uh, parts overlay, obviously. Um, no uh, mention of unused parts, which the main gun obviously would not be. Um, lower hull assembly. Let's see if the, the tracks aren't mentioned yet. Some fenders. They're showing the tracks now on it, so... Oh, here we go. So I guess it is one center guide horn uh, plus the... yeah. Piece. They do are showing a assembly track section. I did not see that in here, but oh, I guess it's on. Okay, yeah, it's here on the. I just didn't turn it right the right way. It's here on the. They give you multiple ones of them. So, um, And they go, they do the complete lower section of the tank, probably because that was actually a separate kit, so they show exactly the way it was built before. And they move on to the top section. Um, don't, again, show why there are two different, um, two different bottom bits, but there are. Okay, so. Is this another one of those, well, there's art. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I think I see. All right. So they're they're just extra tracks, and they're glue. They're <laughs> that's where they are. They're applied onto the bottom. So when this is flipped over, that's why on the box cover it looked like there were tracks on either side because there are. That's where the spare tracks are. Okay. Mystery solved. Um, don't know why there are two bottom sections for this hull piece. Maybe there's another vehicle. Uh, uh, the other the other vehicle where the gun was included. That that's the same bottom section. Is that like a mobile artillery or something, maybe? Because that seems like what that would... The way the gun mantle was designed, it seems like that was what that was for. Although the gun wouldn't seem very large for a mobile artillery. Anyways. All right, well, uh, that's the uh, unboxing portion. Let's move on to the photos, and then we'll come back and conclude.
Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the photos, close-up detail photos of the new Russian 1K17 Zadi, Zadi, whatever, uh, <laughs> um, uh, mobile uh, laser tank. We'll uh, have this one available for a full build project or review. If you're interested, you can email us about that uh, if it's a project you're willing to take on. Uh, can't make many promises, uh, but uh, again, we do have uh, these items available to do further reviews and builds on. So thanks again to our friends at Stevens International for sending us this review sample. And remember, you can comment and like on this video as well, whether you're on YouTube or our website. We appreciate the feedback and uh, love to see you guys uh, interact on things uh, as usual. Uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Cracking the Box. Mm -hmm.